Now we turn to an investor who has owned shares of Berkshire Hathaway for more than 30 years. Mario Gabelli is here. He's Gamco Investors Chairman and CEO. And Mario, you've been coming here for how many years? I don't know. Let's call it a quarter of a century, not that long. Yeah. Probably, <laughs> uh, you know, we sponsor a dinner t tonight for Columbia Business School. We right. pay for it. And so it's, uh, you know, value investing mecca. Right, and this is uh, where you come instead of Churchill Downs, which you own stock we in own Churchill, Churchill Downs. We own Churchill Downs, but that's because we like live entertainment. We like the notion of dealing with Beyonce and that ecosystem. In other words, streaming music. We like Vivendi. We like uh, companies like that. We're buying, uh, even today, Sony, even though there's an air pocket because of the shutdown in Tokyo, put a, a handover. So looking at those areas, baseball, basketball, we uh, Atlanta Braves, everyone... Watching today, Becky should buy some Atlanta Braves. They can own a piece of a baseball team. Stock's 28, 60 million shares, and Malone is going to sell it. You know, live That's entertainment is great. Years. I understand your thinking on that. But baseball in particular has, has struggled. There was just an article about how attendance is down another 4%. This year, and that's up against a year when they were going against rough weather last year. Everybody thought that was why. What, what's wrong? What happens? With uh, that? Well, I can't tell you anything about that's short in the parks. I mean, you know, you're, t you're talking about one quarter of the season. They're probably telling me that the uh, the Yankees uh, have a marvelous uh, bench. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the Atlanta Braves are not doing as well. Uh, but uh, I'm not too concerned about that. The answer is pass for professional and amateur sports betting will put a little extra juice in it. Mm -hmm. What happens is that. Just like in Tiger Woods, you were watching the last two holes, people were putting bets on that. And they can do it in real time. And that's going to keep people watching television longer. That's going to be great for advertising. It's going to be great for broadcasters. So it's a terrific opportunity to, like today, uh, Sinclair, which didn't buy Tribune because right. of their own self, some issues that they had, uh, regional sports network. So sports works, so bas baseball. Uh, watching it they're going to get a piece of uh, of uh, the betting and uh, we think you'll do 30 40 percent up and then you watch that's basketball. interesting it's, it's not about putting seats or putting people in these seats here it's about who's watching on television and what you can do with the with well the those revenue streams are important but i'd yeah. like to give product and i give content on the other side of the coin you know you have players like the phillies hired some chap that makes uh, x dollars per year i'm Rice even going Hoffman. to one of these games because we're so excited about it <laughs> yeah so that's kind of what we're doing in that regard um other than that, when you look around, what do you think of the deal environment? I mean, there, there have been some deals that have been popping up. We even see Berkshire Hathaway getting involved in the Occidental side in that bid for Anadarko. What, what do you see? Because you are the expert when we come to mergers well, and acquisitions. Well, you know, Warren's got a big pool of capital. He's got to, you know, puts uh, some bucks in to uh, deal as a standby. I don't know if that deal is going to go through, but assuming it goes through, he makes a nice return on his investment. Uh, someone is going to say, wow, you didn't do a green deal. But he's going to do green deals. So what more, you know, when you look at Berkshire at uh, $310,000 a share, you're talking about 1.6 million shares, and they've got 10% uh, of their holdings in one stock. It's Apple. That's almost uh, 250 million shares at, uh, uh, at the price that it's selling at $200 is $50 billion. I, that is a nice investment. Uh, so, you know, when they say, how about golf? We need a new Tiger Woods. Well, they got Tiger Woods back again. So where do we put the money in over the next five years? Hmm. We've got uh, seven and a half billion people, four and a half billion smartphones. What are they going to watch? Who's going to deliver it? They've uh, 1.4 billion cars, vehicles in the world. How are the Chinese going to do? We've got an air pocket right now. What's going to happen when you go to electric? What's going to happen to hybrids? Infrastructure, infrastructure. Hmm. A, bill, a, a bridge fell in Tennessee. A bridge fell in Genoa, Italy. How do we allow this to happen in the deterioration? And where do we get the money? We got to come up with it. Although both sides of the aisle have been talking about infrastructure bills for forever, and the uh, devil is always in the details. Where the is the money is going to come? The devil is in politics. Yeah, well, th th that's true. But what happens? I mean, you would think that this would be the easiest decision that both sides could get behind spending money on infrastructure. And yet, for years, we've been talking about it, and nothing has materialized. Well, from my point of view, how do you pay for it? It's not a gasoline tax anymore. You also have to have a vehicle tax because electrics don't use gas. Right. So as a result of that, some kind of a vehicle tax, and there's ways to do it. If I can figure it out and I spend five seconds thinking about it, uh, we know the money can come. The question is, is the will to do it? I was at a function yesterday. It took six years to get what it was an obvious deal done through the city of New York. And in other parts of the world, like China, you'd get it done in three days. So we have to eliminate the bureaucracy 
of the uh, uh, not only where do we fund it, but how do we get it done quickly so it's efficiently done? You know, we just heard uh, Warren talking about how he doesn't really want to see a Wall Street banker brought into Wells Fargo because of the political problems that it would create and the, the, the firepower that would be coming from Washington with all of these people who are running for president and trying to make a name on it. Um, You've been pretty outspoken about some of the problems you've seen along the way, too, including with Amazon trying to build a, a second headquarters in New York City. Well, about uh, 50 years ago, I was working for Lindsay to get him elected in New York, and uh, his policies didn't work because he didn't anticipate the next down cycle. New York was almost bankrupt. Six years from now, we can have that kind of a chill factor. So bringing in a, sc a scale like Amazon was going to do in right next to LaGuardia in uh, Queens would have been a new input. So that's a different issue. How do we pay for that infrastructure? Where do we get the talent? Mm -hmm. How do we remain competitive? The things that we're doing in taxes are brilliant. The, the going territorial, the rates are down. That'll allow companies to come into the United States to create uh, new opportunities. Instead of thinking about us locating in Shanghai, somebody in Shanghai is going to say, hey, we got to locate somewhere in the United States. Because we changed our, ta our corporate tax Absolutely. structure. Absolutely. Not only the, uh, yes, the, not only the rate, but the whole approach toward territorial versus global, towards expensing uh, CapEx. Have you changed your approach as an investor because of those changes to the tax code? Well, you know, there are companies like Textron, which we like, well run. The stock is still intriguing. There's 230 million shares. The stock's traded at 53 yesterday, and we think there's a long runway for their uh, airplanes, but a company buying it can take a run 100% right off today instead of just taking it over an extended period of time. So that's an element, but still have to come up with manufacture it at the right price, sell it at the right price for the right customer, and still uh, the free market works with all of the problems. What, uh, what's your outlook on the market these days, just in terms of the prices that we've seen? Because both Charlie uh, Munger and Warren Buffett have made comments to us this year that Buying a company outright is more expensive than they'd seen uh, than at just about yeah, any well, other time. Yeah, that's just echoing what they've said before. Right. Is today's multiple of EBITDA? Becky, when I started the firm 50 or 40 years ago, when I started 50 years ago in the investment business, sell side analyst, 40 years ago, you were buying companies at three or four or five times cash flow. Today, they're 10, 12. So what he's saying is, in light of today's interest rates of 2.54% on a 10 year, will you be able to look? 10 years out, can those multiples that you have to pay today sustainable? And that's why he's probably sit back and said, I put a quarter of, uh, you know, the amount of money that he's done in Apple and what he's doing in Amazon. Well, that's what they say, that they can find shares, uh, stocks in the market that they like. But when you're trying to buy a company outright, that's why they've got like $111 billion in yeah, cash that's sitting okay. around because they can't find things it's to do with it. It's just a number. Uh, <laughs> on the other side of the coin, the Green New Deal by distributed power solar, wind, but also have a battery that can maintain it. Do not allow ourselves to be stuck on, uh, on the grid in, with all the cybersecurity issues that are there. So uh, where would I go? Look, Warren can buy AutoNation, okay? There's uh, 90 million shares at 40, 3.6 billion, but it's tiny. He can buy Genuine Parts, one of my favorite companies, and they're extraordinarily well managed, a global replacement parts company that benefits from inflation, maintains margins in an industry that's smart, and uh, the stock's selling at 102 with uh, 147 million shares. And uh, the great company. Uh, but somebody's got to make love. So somebody's got to, Charlie uh, and uh, Warren have to go and say, come on, join us. <laughs> uh, that's not, the, so there are two parts. One is the economic structure. The other one is saying, let's get things started. Yeah, right. let's get started. So going back to Oxy, you know, that was pretty typical. Now, you asked about the financial engineering. On Monday, on Monday of this week, Gardner Denver, uh, which has 200 million shares located up in Milwaukee, and I was going to visit them. In fact, I'm there next week on Tuesday or Wednesday. The stock was going to have, you know, drift along at 27.8. Kate Clark, uh, Henry Kravis owned 35% of the company. They bought a system from Ingersoll Rand, and the stock popped 30%. So it goes to show there are pluses in the financial engineering, not only takeovers, but who's spinning off, who's doing it, and Ed Breed and Ed DuPont is doing the same thing. And you've, so There's always stuff out there. There's always a point. lot to do. And uh, yeah. even though the market's discounted some of the uh, Chinese deal that will come, uh, it'll be okay. 
Yes. Mario, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Always a privilege to talk about baseball and basketball. Mario and Beyonce. Uh, of course, the three Bs.